Okay, well, good evening, everyone. Uh, officially, welcome to this first of four uh, special online Zoom sessions that we're running on behalf of Lockall Football Club. And these are particularly geared to uh, development of players at different age groups of the football club. Um, we are living in strange times, uh, difficult times. No doubt a lot of people have got different pressures and a lot of things happening in their lives um, with work, family, those involved in essential services, maybe those who have contracted the, the disease, business pressures. And uh, what doesn't help is you know young kids, footballers, young men, right up to the first team, not, not getting out and, and getting training. Um, so we've put these on. Uh, what we're looking to do is uh, just provide a bit of interaction, uh, but provide real value as well and, and try and open the minds um, of the young players developing about some of the key things that they need to do. You know, um, I, I know that uh, Denver from the youth setup have been talking about doing these and got a few plans on a couple other ones. Um, but this really came about a few weeks ago when Gary Wilkinson, the under 20s manager, uh, floated the idea on our development WhatsApp group. So, uh, Gary, you want to say a quick sort of 30 seconds there about what you had in mind, what we're looking to achieve with this? Oh, what happened there? Yeah, okay, go ahead. Can you hear me okay? Yep, absolutely fine. Um, yeah, so as DJ said, uh, it was just uh, really this last few weeks, um, the whole lockdown situation, it was a case of maybe trying to do something to gear uh, the, the players who are at the, the older age groups of the, the club sort of in the right direction of, of getting the right mentality of when things do come back to, to where we want to be, that they're still sort of sharp in their mind and what they want to do. Um, as DJ said, it's, it's a case of, for me, when I came to Lock All, the progression that the, the academy has made is fantastic. But <clears throat> for me, the key thing has been the connection with the first team. You'll go to a lot of clubs and there isn't that connection. It's like two separate entities. And um, so the connection with the first team has been excellent. So for me, I think it was a case of getting the 18s and 20s especially involved in these sessions where it almost becomes then that rather than always looking at their coaches, they also have then players in the first team that they can look up to. If they ever need a chat or they ever want something, some information that there's people in the first team that they can look up to and speak to, and there's that connection. Um, and as I've said before, <clears throat> Dean has been instrumental in bringing that um, connection with DJ and then the rest of the development squad. So it's just it's just to further that and push it on and let the boys sort of get that um, that connection with the first team and, and the rest of the club. And then for the younger boys, it's good to hear and listen to this. What what comes next? What do you need to do? Can you improve yourself and what's coming forward for you is whenever you make that jump in two, three years' time. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Um, so we want these sessions to be as interactive as we can, guys. So appreciate not everyone um, you know, can be on camera. Appreciate some people just can't do that. That's fine. Or you can be, be on camera. Uh, for those of you that aren't that familiar with Zoom, uh, do try and make sure you're on mute um, initially um, so that we're not getting too much background noise. Uh, and also, if you're not familiar, and I'm sure most people are now, but if you go to the top right hand of your screen, you have some options uh, to, to view the screen. So probably the best one to pick is the, it's the second one over, which is the speaker view. Uh, and then you'll only see the, the person that's speaking. Um, the next one over is the gallery view. You can jump onto that if you want. You can see who else is on the call. Um, but during the presentation or during the Q&A, you're probably better being on the, the speaker view and that way you'll get a, a, a big screen of whoever's um, answering the question or, or speaking. So let's roll straight into this tonight. I'm looking forward to this over the next couple of weeks. Uh, I think there'll be huge value, great line of speakers lined up. Um, two really good ones tonight uh, to, to kick us off. So again, if everyone can please put themselves on mute. Um, so, um, Alan County, if Alan County please can put themselves on mute. That would be beneficial. All right. Okay, guys, make sure everyone's on mute. All right. Um, so kicking off the first one tonight, into the first team and beyond is the topic of conversation. So we're going to introduce the two speakers um, together, and then we'll, we'll, we'll bring them in for, for a chat after that. So first up is first team manager, Dean Smith. 
and I've dug out a few photographs. Most of the people at the club obviously know Dean from being the first team manager. Not too many may know his, his sort of full background uh, in terms of football. Um, so on the screen there, of course, winning uh, the Mid-Ulster Cup uh, last season, uh, which was great. Uh, and again, if I could even just pay tribute to Dean um, in terms of that, that night, because he had the confidence to go with a couple of younger players, three or four players that were through the development, and he had the confidence to go with them that night, and they managed to beat Glenavon. Uh, I think it was a really good night for the club to prove that Lockall is a place where young players who are good enough, good enough to impress Dean, uh, will be given a chance. I think it made a, a superb statement uh, about the football club. Um, there's Dean in his younger days uh, playing at Lockall. I did look, Dean, for the, the, the photograph of the five trophies, but I just didn't manage to dig it out. Um, but in terms of Dean's career, most people maybe don't know, um, age of 14 to 16, he was at Glenavon, went to Tranmere Rovers then um, for about two years, come back, spent two years at Linfield, a uh, short spell at Armagh, and then a couple of years at Glenavon. Um, he scored 19 um, one year in the Premier League. I think he just finished behind Gary Haylock and, I think most people at a club that Gary Haylock was at finished behind Gary when it came to goal scoring, but 19 goals in the Premier League is no mean feat for a young player. And photograph there of Dean playing in, in Europe, uh, the UEFA Cup. Um, so certainly a, a, a strong pedigree right up to, to where he is now. I'm going to hear from him in a minute. Uh, in fact, Dean, I'll let you just say a quick, quick hello now. Any initial comments you want to make um, just about, about tonight? No, as I say, it's just a great opportunity for the the younger players to first of all speak to speak to first team player who in my eyes has been there and done it and, and, and bought the t-shirt many times uh, and also to hear from the coaches within the club and maybe what it takes to make the first team and go beyond that brilliant okay thank, thanks very much um, and then alongside Dean tonight uh, in fact as far another photograph of Dean scoring a goal better not forget that one all right <laughs> I'm guessing that's what Bambridge Town that must be, is it? That's the middle of Cup final, yeah. Bambridge Town. Very good. Very good. That's actually at Armagh City, even though they have a, they have a 3G pitch, that's when they used to have the grass pitch. That's how long ago that was. Very good, very good. Was it was that, that must have been the five in a row or the five trophy season, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Very good, very good. Excellent. Okay, and delighted as well to welcome uh, Stephen Ferguson, uh, first team captain at uh, Lock Gall currently. Um, actually has overtaken Dara Peden's record as the longest serving first team captain. I'm sure Dara was well annoyed at that, but unfortunately, big man Stephen's just uh, managed to pip you. So this is Stephen's testimonial year um, at Loch Gall. So fantastic servant to the club and uh, brilliant he could spend some time with us tonight. Uh, obviously lifted a fair few trophies in his, his time. What not everyone may know is that... Um, Stephen went over to Leeds, um, I think about 1999, as a 16-year-old, and was actually at Leeds, initially YTS, then signed a, a four-year full-time pro contract, and was at Leeds at the age of 22. Um, so there's some, some images of him there. Um, and then come back and played for Newry for a couple of years in the Premiership. Part of your nickname <laughs> is Benny Is that correct, Fergie? <laughs> I wouldn't want to try and get into that there now, to be honest with you. <laughs> I was doing a bit, I had to do a bit of digging on you, like, so is, is this your real nickname, is it? No, it's definitely not, no. <laughs> definitely <Good>. not. <laughs> but yeah, but in, in, in terms of football, obviously you've had a, an excellent career. Great, great you're on tonight. So you want to say a quick sort of hello initially and then we'll get into the, the Q&A? Yeah, I'm just delighted to be, um, to be asked to, to come on, you know, and... Um, answer um, some of the questions from some of the boys and maybe give them a bit of an insight into, into the club and, and what mm -hmm. I've, you know, been through over the years through um, being at that call and what um, some of them could maybe go on and do at the club, you know? Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so um, here's how we're going to work it. We've got um, some questions initially, but um, what we want to do where possible is let people ask live questions. So here's what we're going to do. If everyone can listen up carefully, if you put your questions in the chat box okay and then i'll call your name and you can unmute yourself and ask your question so i want lots of interaction from from the audience tonight so young players <coughs> older players um stick your questions in the chat box and then gary and i will have a look at them and uh say we'll, we'll sort of pick pick them out then 
um, as as we go along. Um, I think probably the best place to start, Fergie, could be yourself, just in terms of, uh, well, fact, same for both, but to start with Fergie, um, that sort of getting the chance to go across the water for a lot of players on the call, younger players, that is, I suppose, the dream. It's still the dream for everyone starting off youth football. So what was it like at the age of 16? You know, how were you spotted? And what was it like deciding to move to England as a full-time professional? Um, I was, yeah, <laughs> It's a long time ago now to be fair, but um, no, I, I for through the years of the youth teams, um, I went and played down in Belfast for St Andrews as a as, as part of the youth team. Um, there was really no clubs up around here, and then obviously I got the chance then to go to a couple of clubs in England on trial. And you know, I thought at the time Leeds was the best fit, so it was one of them there that I chose them to sign whenever I finished school, and you know, moved over there. At 16, after I finished my GCSEs, not really knowing anyone. Um, but, you know, if, as a young lad, I think, um, you know, that's what a lot of young lads want to do. And that's what they, they, they wish they, would, they could do. Um, I got the opportunity and I spent six really, really good seasons there. You know, I learned a lot and took a lot home with me. And I would never change that, their opportunity for the world. Mm-hmm. And did you go over it with, like, a... A fear or inferiority complex, think I'm going to England, or were you sort of a 16 year old that was confident in your ability and embraced the challenge? No, I went over um, fully aware of of what I was going over to. You know, I spent a lot of time at weekends at, at different clubs in England um, on trial, and you know, I always went over and I always come back as being one of the best players in the pitch and. I always thought to myself, well, you know, if I'm going over there and I'm doing that there in these clubs, then, you know, I must have a great opportunity then to go on and do something, you know, better than that there. So, um, no, I was never, I was never, I was always confident in my own ability. I was never inferior of, of anyone really at that age. Definitely not. Yeah, I think that, that, that's interesting. Dean, sort of the same question to you. Obviously, you spent time at Tranmere. Um, you know, what was that like to kind of get a call to be told <laughs> they want you? Uh, and what sort of went through your mind as a, a young, you know, young player? Yeah, it's it's a fantastic opportunity, as Stephen said. But for me, it was I'd been going back and forth. There were school holidays and and, and so forth. You know, the summers and Easter's and going and staying maybe a week and, and two weeks at a time. And so when when I went across, we I was sort of familiar with the place, so to speak. And again, it's it's an opportunity that. As Stephen says, it's, it's fantastic. I suppose every footballer, young footballer, aspires to get across the water and, and try and make it. Uh, unfortunately for me, it, it didn't work out. I got, I got very homesick. I was home probably more times than I was there, you know, at the start. Uh, but you, you do settle in the life, and it is a fantastic opportunity. It's completely different now, you know, till, till probably what I was. Uh, I went across and lived with, I actually lived with a family over there, you know, and we were away where I was. I was away from the rest of my squad. So literally after training, after I'd done my duties, I went home and sat in the house till till the next morning where now I think it's completely different. You you live with the players, you live with within a close proximity to the training ground, if not in the training ground. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was a great opportunity for me. And again, probably homesickness caused me to come home more than anything. Right. Okay. Interesting. We'll we'll delve in a bit a bit more about the mentality of that just in a minute. Um, Cooper, you've asked a question there. Can you unmute yourself, please, and feel free to ask your question? Who was the youngest player to play for Loch Gall and who was it? Okay, so who, who's the youngest player to play for Loch Gall and, and who was it, as in the first team at Loch Gall? That's a good yeah. question. I think maybe it's Keith Kearney. You're right, actually, yes. Um, in fact, if, if Ernie, Ernie, if you were able to talk, could you mind unmuting yourself and and maybe just because you'd know more about Keith than any of us? So I don't know if, if Ernie's able to uh, unmute himself. And you hear me there? Okay, yeah. Yes, go ahead, Ernie. Yes, to take a quick. It's a really good question from Cooper there. So maybe just because I know you had a big influence on Keith and brought him up through the youth. Yeah. So basically, pretty much uh, within like all youth, as you probably know, I've been around a lifetime, so I have. So. Well, I've sort of done this my first second round. The first second round, I had Alexa Keith Kearney, who just mentioned her, and Ben Neil, who actually plays in the first team squad there now. But Keith was with me. Uh, Keith would have been 14 years of age. He was 15 in February, and he played in the early, he made his debut in the early rounds of the Irish Cup against Tanagee Rovers, I think it was. 
and um, he actually came on as a sub and scored within sort of the last maybe 10, 15 minutes. Um, so you're probably talking just under 15. Uh, Keith then went on that year, Lockall went on to win the Bob Ratcliffe Cup and he was actually also in the squad for that as well. Mm -hmm. we there's, a pic there's a picture of Keith there actually on the right. That's Keith Kearney there. Yeah, so... So then, he, then he, after uh, the likes of playing and that there, sort of put him in more of a spotlight um, because he's obviously was just turning 15, playing in the Irish Cup, playing in uh, you know, uh, major uh, Northern Ireland competitions. And uh, Northern Ireland then sort of got hold of him. And um, then at 16, uh, left for Rochdale where he completed a two-year scholarship. Um, and then sort of returned back home, played lock off for a short while, but then returned back to England to sort of work on, I think he's actually still playing football for non-league side, how far down long non-league sides, I'm not sure, but he is still sort of involved, still playing in football now, so yes. Brilliant. Okay, Ernie, th thank you for that. That's a, a very um, detailed and full answer to a very good question, Cooper, so thank you for that. You, you, you just try and make sure, Cooper, that you're not too far after him at a 15, 16 year old. Keep, yeah. Keep impressing. That's keep impressing. You're doing well. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm going to bring uh, Dara in, in a second to ask the question, but one more before Dara asks one of his, which is a great question. Um, Dean, you mentioned kind of mm -hmm. mentality there. So sticking with across the water a bit before we bring it back into sort of championship and, and first team currently. Uh, mentality. So for you first and then over to Fergie. You've arrived over to England, you know, new environment, the challenges of homesickness. What mentality do you think the young players need when they arrive there? What is it that makes a difference of those who stay and flourish? Because probably all of them have the talent to be there. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been scouted. But some make it and some don't. And is it fair to say mentality is probably the, the key? Yeah, massively. It's, I think it's the key at any level of football if you want to succeed at any level, not just <clears throat> across the water, but, you know, a willingness to work, a willingness to learn, you know, your attitude, your commitment levels, uh, all the, but I call, again, probably Fergie sick, sick here, me, but every Saturday I say the same things, you know, it's, it's about all the things that probably doesn't come along with the talent, you know, talent can only get you so far, it has to be your attitude, your commitment, your work rate, your willingness to work, your willingness to learn, you know, even, even though you might think you know it all, you still be willing and open to learning new things and, and that's probably what, what makes a player. Fergie, same question to you. Yeah, as Dean said, you know, you can have all the ability in the world, but if you can't match it with, you know, the, the want to, to be the best or the want to work hard or, you know, that all goes hand in hand with, with having the ability. But when you go, the, you know, you, you go to Lakes England and you're, you're 16 and you're taken out of the environment of being at home with your parents and then, um, you're through into this massive football club. Um, as Dean said, you're in a house, you know, with this family, two people or two other lads, um, maybe one's from Scotland, maybe one's from England, that you've only sort of met up with a couple of times. You know, it's hard. It's, it is. It's difficult. And, um, you know, ability-wise, these boys are there because they're good players, but a lot of them fall short because, you know, they haven't matched that there with their, you know, their will to want to work hard and, um, and listen as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, it means yeah. Um, it actually, to me, it you know, talent takes you so far, but you need to have that there. Want to want to be the best and want to work hard, and um, that's what makes it all. Okay, no, brilliant. That's that's really good insight. Um, Dara, do you mind unmuting yourself? I know you've got um, I mean, one or two questions. I think are very relevant to sort of everyone on the on the call. Yeah, um, my video's not working. This one to you, Fergie. Um. No, you're a bit of fairy age, Fergie, tell you the truth, but you've had a brilliant career, I think, what, 10, 12 years now as, as captain, won a lot of trophies, and I suppose Dino could answer it as well. For the young boys in the under-12s or in the, you know, the National League teams, what sort of personal sacrifices? Because it's probably something that they're maybe not aware of at the minute. Things like holidays and your Friday nights and New Year's Eve parties, and you've maybe a match on New Year's Day and, and, and putting things aside all for football, you know, and, and yeah, you know, like if, 
no matter what age you are, you, you, you're going to have to make them sacrifices. Um, you know, as you said, 12, 13, 14, you know, you can't, you can't go out on Friday night to go and see your mates and hang about and do things that other, other kids want to do. Um, I know when I was growing up, when I was sort of at that age, I always sort of sacrificed my Friday nights. And since then, I've never, I've never had a Friday night where I've, you know, been out and doing stuff um, because I've always been conscious of playing the Saturday. Um, but regarding as well, you know, these things, if you want to be the best, if you want to be the best player you can be, these sacrifices have to be made. And, you know, all the, all the top players have made them through the years. They get to where they're going and get to where they have been. Mm -hmm. I and what think about then, even so your your discipline to training is there anything that that you know you would want mention there you know for any you know, young players coming up even at this time in lockdown when there's Zoom sessions and stuff being done you know is it just a, a second nature thing do you feel like that training was just part and parcel of something that you did you know to to reach the level that you have yeah it, it, I loved it though I love and I still do I love training um you know my dad when I was growing up my dad you know, had me out two or three times a week. Um, you know, even if it was just running around the, the, the industrial estate, two or three mile, um, 13, 14. And that was what we done. Um, he brought me out to the local football pitch. We set up these sessions. He wasn't he wasn't a football coach, but he just done that because he knew he knew that, you know, it gives me a head it gave me a head start. You know, other people would have been sitting in the house playing the Xbox or sitting playing the PlayStation. But I was out in the rain, sleet, snow, um, just putting that work in trying to be the best player that you can be, you know, and it sat me in good stead because it got me over to England. Um, it got me six good years at Leeds, you know, and then I come home and, you know, I think I've had a decent career back here. Um, so, no, you, you, it's, you need to work hard and you need to have the mentality of this is what I want to do. And as I said, the Zoom sessions that's been set on this last couple of weeks have been brilliant for the lads, you know, the, the, you know, if, if it was me at that age, I would have been wanting to do them all the time because it just keeps you keeps you taking over, keeps you training, keeps your head right, you know, that way. Have you any else, Dara, you want to you ask? Uh, no, just then, on, well, I'd say, sort of said that on the, the one that Dino then, and obviously Dino then is first team manager, but you know, a lot of young players coming through from the National League teams and I suppose you played Irish League football and been across the water with Fergie. I'm just thinking as a championship manager, do you know, to play in the Legault first team, what sort of qualities? And you sort of mentioned it in your last question about work ethic and, and it's going to probably be similar, but yeah. are there any qualities in particular you're looking from? I know there's a few coaches, you know, on the on the call here. That you would be highlighting or you know, in particular that would stand out for you, maybe? Yeah, probably. It just, again, reiterate what I said earlier also with professionalism. You know, you got to look at a player and he's got to be professional in his manner and how he goes about things. You know, you look at, you look at, you know, Fergie's a fantastic example. I don't want to go on about his age, but, you know, there's not many people that are playing football, never mind the level that, that Fergie plays on week in, week out. It's because of his professionalism. You know, he looks after himself. He does his training. As he says, he never misses training. They was similar, never, never missed training. For a big thing for me was that, that I found and it took me to the later years to find it was sleep. Sleep is a massive, especially on your, your night before a match, is making sure that you get the right amount of sleep. And obviously the intake of, the intake of water the day before and the day of the game was, was massive for me. And it took me probably a long, long time to find out about more more so sleep. Uh, you know, and, and again, it was not that I was out on a Friday night or, or running around doing anything. I always prepared, prepared well, never went out on a Friday night, but maybe didn't get to sleep at the right time. You know, maybe watch TV for too long and that does affect you and it doesn't probably till you get to that later stage that that you realise that you need X amount of hours to sleep to, to function properly or the best you can on, on a Saturday for a football player. Okay, yeah, no, that's, that's interesting. Um, Gary, if you want to um, line up one, I just remember everyone um, put your questions in the chat box for us um, and then we can, we can unmute you. Um, Jack Simmons, can you unmute yourself, please, and ask your question if you can, please? Are you there, Jack? Unless Jack's maybe the parents, the parents' name or something. He says he's not able to, DJ. Not able to. Okay, so I'll read yours out. Brilliant. Thanks, Gary, for that. So Jack Simmons asks, 
Um, again, a question for, for both um, Fergie and Dino. What is the best way to prepare for a match? And uh, people do have differences on this, but what, what, what would you two have done uh, throughout your careers in terms of match preparation? Let's take it from the, let's talk about the Friday night. Let's take it from the Saturday morning, maybe what your breakfast was leading up to the match and then how you arrived at the game in terms of your mentality. I think that'd be a good, uh, a good way of doing it. Do you want me to go first then yes, <laughs> on that? Uh, for me, <coughs> personally, it was, a, it was a very, very light breakfast. And this is just for a, uh, this is for a three o'clock kickoff. So I would have had a very light breakfast, maybe tea and toast or, or, or cereal. And then at about half 11, 12, before I left to, to meet up, I would always have beans and toast or scrambled egg and toast or, or something that, not a massive meal, but they give you that that amount that you you felt that you were you weren't starving before the game uh, and then obviously it's the intake of fluids as well uh, the intake of water and, and making sure that you're you're hydrated enough uh, for me that, that that was my that was my what I did every Saturday prior to a game you know again with with the youth team players it'll, it'll differ because obviously their kickoff times change you know so if you're playing early morning, obviously it's maybe just something late before you go and play. Or if you're like a, a late morning kickoff, maybe it's, it's trying to eat the, the beans and toast or the scrambled egg, whatever it may be, for your breakfast, you know, and letting that try and get into the body and, and getting the, the fuel out of that. Brilliant. Okay. Fergie? Yeah, as Dean said, um, you know, it's, uh, for me it was always trying to get a good night's rest on a Friday night, you know, going to bed early and then getting up Saturday morning and then thinking about what it was going to put into me um, regarding giving me that sort of, you know, energy to, to play that day. And I always had, I've sort of had it from maybe 15 years now where I've always had scrambled egg, beans and toast with a cup of tea. Um, and then I would sort of try and get the body, the fluids on board, uh, plenty of water. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't go necessarily drinking um, any energy drinks, to be honest with you. I don't think they're too good for you. So, I would stay away from them. Just plenty of water, um, pack it a pack it a wine gums as well, maybe about one o'clock, just to give me that wee bit of sugar. But as Dean says, the water is a massive thing, and I neglected it for a long time as well until about maybe ten years ago, where I started to take more on board. And then um, you find yourself when you have uh, plenty of water on board, you won't get as tired as quick. But as you said, the younger players, their their kickoffs are going to be earlier, so it's going to be different. You know, maybe a bit of beans and toast. Yeah. Uh, two hours before it and then some juice and some water on board and then that should do you really okay um what about maybe recovery that's probably something that's changed a lot um probably since uh some of those older ones were playing when it came to recovery you should just shake hands if you even shook hands and walked off the pitch and that was it um that, uh, you must have saw that but both of you have saw that change in your career um possibly for me it's uh, <coughs> probably Show me age, but it's similar to you, you shook hands, you walked off the pitch, and you know, you the, the next your, your recovery was Tuesday night. Uh, yeah. You know, the training now it's completely different. You know, everybody for me, it's just a personal thing. Everybody has different ways of recovery. You know, people like to stretch after a game. You know, people, some some people like to go for a jog on a Sunday just to stretch, stretch the legs and stretch the body. And again, with all the, the facilities that the club is has and, and up and coming, you know, the likes of ice bass, you know, is, is a massive recovery now, you know, it's it's something that maybe that I wasn't too keen on, but for me personally, it was just more about stretching and making sure on, on a Sunday or a Monday that I, that I, I done a light jog just to stretch the legs again, really, and that was I'm trying to get any soreness out of the legs, that, that was mine, but as you say, it's changed massively and and over the last few years, especially with, especially with nutrition and, and the ability to, to do ice baths and, and so forth. You know, probably I think I think there's a Zoom session coming with Kyle in the next few weeks, uh, which he'll talk about nutrition and stuff. And, and that's probably playing a big, big part in football now, more so than, than, than probably anything at the minute. Mm -hmm. So but before I go down to Fergie on, on maybe how things have changed as he's got a little bit older, um, before we came on uh, live, we were chatting about um, Dean McCulloch. Um, that would be Scott's father, um, who yeah. I played with a little bit in, in my spells at, at Lockall. But we were, along with Noel Robinson, were reminiscing that, that Dean, towards the latter end of his career, his mid 30s, didn't leave the dressing room before the game. Uh, he literally stood up, sort of rocked the grounds a bit, maybe did a few sort of press ups or sort of 
back, back dips off the, the, the dressing room uh, bench. And that was it. And walked out and usually was man of the match every week, controlled the game without even breaking sweat. So I don't know, Fergus, you've got a wee bit older toward, let's just say, towards the end of your career, as opposed to the beginning of your career to try and be kind. Have you found your, your stretching and your recoveries changed in, in recent years? Yeah, massively, massively. Yeah. Um, I think it's the older you get, you don't realise until you get to a certain age where you know you need to you need to make sure that you have recovered after a football match. Um, I'm lucky enough that at the club now this last few years I I've only trained one night a week, um, and it's partly because of the 4G as well. You know, at, at 37, it's not great for me. Um, but after a game on Saturday, now I would I would try and get stretched off and then have a shower and then. Um, Sunday morning I would get up and I would um, either go for a light jog or maybe just do a, a light gym session to try and try and get loosened up and stretching off again because then um, by Tuesday when you come back to training you feel then that obviously you know you're ready to go again um, yeah. years ago maybe you wouldn't have done that there um, you would have just went home as Dean said and or maybe went to the bar and had a couple of pints as opposed to doing anything else but yeah. nowadays I would I would definitely I would definitely do a lot more stretching and a lot more um a lot more work than on my sort of my body to try and keep myself right for for Tuesday night and then to go again. Yeah, very good. You, you must be a friend of Gary Hamilton, giving off about the three G, are you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's always uh, complaining. It, it's my groins, <laughs> my groins and hip aren't aren't suited for it. I think um, nowadays well, that, the younger lads actually, have all grown up with it. Yeah, well, actually, leaves me in. Gary. I'll hold, I'll hold your question for one. Okay, so hang on, Gary. I'll come back to you in a second. But um, Denver, could you unmute yourself because Dean's mentioned the facilities there. And um, Fergie's mentioned the 3G. So I know, Denver, you were going to ask a question that kind of relates to both of those. So if Denver can... Uh, yeah, my, my question uh, to Dean, first off, uh, how have the recent changes in the facilities um, impacted on, obviously, your role when the club, Dean? Uh, massively. I think when we when we initially took over, we, we were training at Dungannon Youth one night a week. On I think that was a Tuesday. We had, the, I think it was half a pitch. And then... On a Thursday, believe it, I think there was like a wee mug of pitch down beside Dungan Youth, and the, we used to train that on a Thursday. Then obviously, moving on, we we got to use Dungan Youth, and then another place in, in Dungan, and I think it's the high school, is it, with the three G pitch? And then obviously, you evolve, and we have our own training facility, which is now is fantastic. It's a it's a hub, you know, for, for me personally as a manager, I can interact with everybody, you know, from. From my coaches right down to to Gary, you know, and, and right down through the team in use because obviously they 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 train in, in the time starts before us. It's 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 the hub of the club now. You know what I mean? It's it's something that brings everybody together. And with that, you know, when when we when we first started off, we had no really interaction with, with the twenties at all. We never seen who who was maybe doing well or who maybe wasn't. And now we just have to look across the pitch and we we can pull players out, which we have done from. And we've had that facility where we're able to pull players out and take a look at them training alongside first team players and that's how that's how we, we judge and that's how we've come across players Ben Neal and Luke Cartwrights and Johnny Eertz and John Scott's and you know we've, we've pulled them out of, of 20s training first and foremost and we brought them in and trained with us and for me if they can hold their own within the training session within the first team then obviously it means that they're they're prepared and, and ready to do it on a more regular basis but the facility itself at the Black Hall I think is I'm biased, but I think it's it's probably one of the best, if not the best, in Northern Ireland. Not just that, but if you look at the pitch, the first team pitches and the grass pitches is fantastically maintained. We now have a gym on, you know, on site. We have a physio on site, and everything is what I call under the one roof. So you come and you park your car, and you've got all these facilities under one roof, which I think is fantastic for the football club. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think Fergie agrees with everything you say except the three G. <laughs> 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 no, I don't mind it that much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, but it is that, Dean, you make a really valid point, Dean. I mean, in this day and age, to be able to do all of those things that are relevant, you know, to youth football right up through, you know, the, the development squads into the first team, to be able to do that under one roof. Uh, I mean, outside, you know, maybe a Linfield, and a, you know, there's not oh, many other clubs can do that. There really isn't. Um, it's not, so it's, it's not that when the players have that interaction with the first team players, you know, some teams... Mm-hmm. <laughs> clubs where I was with the first team definitely stayed away and, and you were nearly an awe of them at times you know you weren't afraid to talk to them 
and there was mm-hmm. no interaction between the first team and the twenties or the eighteens or, or the sixteens or the fifteens or the twelves or whatever it may be. Yeah. Now yeah. we're on site and we do have that inter- interaction at times. You know, where players aren't afraid to talk to first team players because at the end of the day they're, they're just people, and you know they should be shouldn't be held in, in such high esteem, especially within the club when you, that you're in. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Gary, um, let you come in. You've got a couple of questions you've been you've been uh, keen to ask. Oh, well, I suppose one would be for me, for both of you, both played across the water, um, but something's changing within the, the sort of the company at the minute that I'm a keen believer in. And it would just be your opinion on how much more important is it to set your sights on getting into the first team rather than actually believing that across the water is the holy grail. So it's, you know, you, you look at a, a Stuart Dallas or you look at a, a Gavin White, Joel Cooper, who have all established themselves playing first team football in this country first. Um, you know, so for me, it'd just be your opinions on the kids sort of setting their goal first and foremost. And most importantly, especially for you, Dean, is the best players coming and playing in the first team and then hopefully getting that move across the water. Yeah, it's. Again, I, I think, as you said, things have changed. I don't think being across the water is, is the be-all and end-all now. Yeah, I think there is different pathways and everybody will find their own path. You know, uh, you've just mentioned Stuartie and, and uh, Gav, uh, Sexy as well, who's over at Oxford at the minute, who all played Irish League football. And I think the standard within the Irish League, the Premiership and certainly the First Division, has, has risen massively over the last probably four or five years, you know. Each team is more professional. Each team is well, is well uh, coached. They're well drilled. Their players are technically much better now than what they used to be. You know, personally, I don't think I could play in, in the Premier League now with the technical ability that there is in it uh, to what it was X amount of years ago. Uh, so, yeah, look, for, for, for kids coming through, I think it's, for me personally, and it was when I was growing up, I can only speak for myself here, that when I was done off, my aim was to get into the Dunham first team. That was, that was my aim. 100% that all I wanted to do was play for the Navin. Anything that came off the back of that, brilliant. But my aim was to play in the first team of the club I was at. And I think for any young player coming through, that should be your aim is no matter what club you're at, is to play in their first team and be, and be the best player. That was that was my that was my goal. Uh, and again, if something came off the back of that, then, then brilliant. That, that, that improved that improved me or the career, brilliant. But if not, that's that, that should be the goal of any young player the football club is to make sure that they can be the best they can and give themselves the best opportunity you know and that's uh, and that me at Black Ball because we are the club that financially is never going to be able to match the so-called bigger clubs in and around us we have to look at different pathways and, and youth is a, is, a, is a pathway that you know, we spoke about privately that is a massive effort Black Ball is that we want to get, try and get the best young players at Black Ball and we, we want to give them the best opportunity and then, again, if you're good enough, you will find your way into the first team. Fergie, you want to add anything to that? No, just what Dean said. I think well it goes right as well. What he says, um, I think maybe years ago it was uh, it was you know it was the main thing for any young lad is to try and get across the water because I thought that was the pathway for you know becoming a sort of professional footballer. But um, you know nowadays, and you know. <laughs> As kids, you know, as Dean says, you should be, whatever club you're at, you should aspire to be the best at that club. And whether that takes you through to the first team um, and beyond, then that's that's the route to go. The proof's in the pudding this last couple of years where there's been, you know, excellent players in the Irish League, young lads who have played two or three seasons and have moved on. You know, so, you know, if, if you don't if you don't get across the water at 6, 14, 15, 16, you know, you don't think it's don't think it's over for you. You know, it's mm. it's only the beginning of your career. You can, as he says, you can. Everyone, everyone, everyone moves on. You know, everyone, you know, finds their own way in, in football. So it's definitely not the the end if if it doesn't work for you. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because I think the the trend we're talking about there that Gary mentioned that you know playing first team here first, sort of proving yourself physically, if you like, in that men's game before going across the water, one thing I've noticed is that for those that haven't made it, Fergie, that you mentioned, and let's face it, there's very, 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 very few ever actually make it, you know, to be mm-hmm. full-time career long-term. But certainly whenever kind of I was playing, you go back 15, 20 years ago, the vast, vast majority of players that went to England, when they come back from England, virtually none of them made it in an Irish League club. 
They just, they just didn't. I'm not yeah. been critical. I'm not been harsh. Over 10 or 12 years that I was involved in the Irish League playing, be it Premiership or, or the old First Division, very, very few players come back from England at a big club, if you like, and walked into first teams in the Irish League. The game was so different in terms of physicality, even in terms of mentality. They've been mm-hmm. sort of, as a kid, they were a superstar and it didn't quite work out. And, and I don't think they had the mentality to roll their sleeves up at the Irish League club. You know, and I don't know if Dean, you would agree with that or disagree, but that's certainly my take that, that players just come home, thought they were too good for the Irish League in many cases, and just ended up just drifting out of football completely, which is sad. Yeah, I think they got caught out, as you said. When you go over to, or when you did go over to England, you were, you were taught more technical ability. It was about technical ability. You come back to the Irish League, and, and at that time, 15, 20 years ago, it was very, very physical, you know, and I think that's where players coming back from a full-time environment got found out. Also, when you're in a full-time environment, you are spoiled a little bit, you know, so you have your, your training sessions, you train every day, you get in the routine. When you come back home, you're back down to part-time football, so you're training on a Tuesday and a Thursday, and it, it is a massive reality check. It is a massive wake-up call to go, oh, hold on. And as you say, sometimes it just didn't work out for for a, new, for a number of reasons for players coming back in, but now I think it's, as Gary says, I think it's, if you look more and more players are establish themselves in their Irish League clubs before they go across the water, and you find now after they've played, you know, for a couple of seasons in, in the Irish League, they go across and they're and they're nearly ready made players mm-hmm. ready to go straight in the first time. Where years ago you had to go across and maybe serve your time for two or three years before you made an appearance. And as you said, even if you did make an appearance, you could have been home, you know, when your contract was up. So. Everything's changing and evolving. Uh, the Irish League again is is massively, massively improved to what it was 15, 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. Facilities is getting a lot better. Coaches are getting a lot more educated, let's say, uh, and the players are getting coached better, which then makes them better, makes the leagues around us a lot better. Mm-hmm. You're, you're you're saying that the Premier League in our era was so much worse. Dean, don't don't keep saying that. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, Ernie, are you still there? I know you had a, a question. If you can ask your question, I think it's a very interesting question. I don't even know the answer to it. So, um, are you still there? Yep, got my. Yep, go ahead. Uh, yeah, hear me there, okay? Yeah. Now, this might be an interesting one, and this might tell age, ages now, so it might. So, um, uh, we have this year. We have sort of been successful to actually get two of our teams into sort of the new format with a Super Cup NA, which obviously was Milk Cup previous years. And um, either two years, I know Dean Andy played, but I'm not sure about yourself. Was it uh, was it was it sort of going? Uh, <laughs> those years? Was it going? I'm not sure. As I said, I might try to find out your age here, but as yeah. either two. Experience the milk cup playing the milk cup and sort of what experience did you get from the milk cup? Well, first of all, I, I like to say I was still going. Yeah, when I was going, <laughs> yeah, I, I was I was lucky. I was able to play two years in it. Uh, the second of them years, uh, we had a very successful team and we got the actual semi final of the milk cup. Uh, we played Manchester United, Borussia Dortmund. Uh, we played the Slovakia national team. We beat them in the quarterfinals to make the semi-final and got beat by a very, very good Cherry Orchard team who I think out of the team, seven or eight, went on to be you know, pros in England and had really good careers. So yeah, it, it was a fantastic experience. It's something that you know has lived with me a long time. It's a, it's a fantastic tournament and you get to go up to the North Coast, stay within a group. You know, Really, you're, you're a professional player for them five or six days that you're, you're treated professionally, everything's done that is professional and it's, it gives you an insight into what a professional environment is. Uh, and also you get to come up against very, very good teams who, you know, you maybe wouldn't face every Saturday. So it, it's something for me that, it, that it's, it's a valuable experience for any of the players that's going to go up to, to it. And it's, again, as you say, it's fantastic for the, the club of Lagall to be able to get, you know, two, two teams involved in it. I'll probably let Fergie speak now because he'll have he'll have played in it when it's probably called the Super Cup or something now. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, I'll not try to outdo Dean here, but I played it for four years in a row. <laughs> oh! Yeah. oh. Yeah. 
was lucky enough to play in it four years in a row. Um, the way my birthday fell, I played a year below myself, or a year above myself, sorry, um, for the Lisbon League at the time. Um, now you're going back 25 years. And then, or maybe not even 25 years, maybe a bit less than that, but then I played for the Northern Ireland Schoolboys for two years in it. And then the last year I played for Leeds. So I was actually nearly 17 when I played in the under-16 tournament for Leeds. Um, and the furthest I got was semi-final. We were beat by Man City in the semi-final for Leeds. Um, they had a good side too, that Sean Wright Phillips, Joey Barton, uh, boys that have actually gone on and played and had good careers in England. Um, but as a Super Cup, as a, as a competition... For any young lad, it's it's definitely something that you want to get to because, as Dean said, for that week, you're a professional footballer. You're living, breathing football. You know, everything's geared towards playing matches, um, being together as a group. You know, it's the first sort of taste of, of how you could actually, you know, live as a footballer type thing. And you get to play against some of the best players, uh, you know, about in Europe. And um, it's definitely something that, you know, I loved and I look forward to every year and I got the chance to. It was it was brilliant. And it's great for the club that they've got two teams now in it as well next year. And um, you know, it, it it's definitely something that's it's give good memories, you know, really good memories. Um and made a lot of friends from it as well. Brilliant. Okay, no, Ernie, brilliant question. This, that's exactly what we've got age groups now and players that need to understand the opportunity that's coming their way. The club has pushed the boat out you know, and, and really fought to get these teams into these competitions and, and you know, players need to understand and even, even to a certain extent, parents don't mind me saying, they need to understand that we've opened the door, we've opened the window, like your Ernie's work really hard, make that happen and, and, and the youth coaches, so it's a shop window, it's an opportunity to go and put yourself in a shop window and impress and the, the history of football is littered with, with, you know, people who happen to have the game of their life in front of the right scout and, and the rest is history. So, so you know, if, if you're fortunate enough to be selected to represent Lockwell Football Club, you know, then, then you know, take as an opportunity. Put yourself in the shop window. Um, I, I, that's very, very important. Um, so um, some of the development players, I know on the, on the group chat that we have have been sort of over the last week or so have been asking questions and, and, and Gary's been prompting them. So I um, want to see some of you guys put a few, few questions up here and I'll meet you and get you to ask. So Gary, have you another one lined up there that I know someone asked, but they're not able to um, be on video? Yeah, yeah, I, I'd have one more. One special one to Dean just after that question was, did Luther Mateus play in that Dor Dortmund team? <laughs> 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 no, he didn't. I, Luther's a few years older than me. Uh, <laughs> no, but I was very lucky in the, in the Manchester United team that the two Neville brothers played, Scholes played, uh, Keith Gillespie played. I think there was about six or seven. The only one that didn't play was Beckham, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, but we, we, we actually, they beat us, I think it was 4-2, but we actually were winning 2-0 at half time. Believe it or believe it not. But yeah, Again, it's a fantastic tournament, as Davey says. It's it's a shop window. It's to go and test yourself against the best players of your age, probably in, in Europe. And to me, as as growing up, it was a it was the pinnacle of, of youth football in Northern Ireland. Yeah. Well, my, my question then was for both of you: um, What is the best piece of information that you were given as kids from either a coach or a parent or someone who was supportive that that really drove you on in your career? <clears throat> Or did you want to go first in that one? Um, <laughs> um, probably the best piece of information was or advice was from my dad, really. He was sort of the one that sort of pushed me um, pushed me on at a young age. He obviously seen something in me and thought, you know, um, uh, uh, the abilities are. And maybe at the start, it was um, the attitude wasn't as, as good as it should have been. And he basically sort of just sat me down and says, um, you know, if this is what you want to do, if this is what you want to become a footballer, you're going to have to work harder than anything. You know, you can, you can be the best player in the world, but unless you, unless you put them hours in that no one else sees, unless you work hard when everyone else is doing their thing, you know, them dark nights when it's raining and you don't want to go for a run or, 
your game's called off on a Saturday because, right. you know, the, the pitch is frozen. You know, things like that there. My dad would have had me out then training or he would have had me out doing running or would have been doing something. And it's just getting that mentality into me um, that to be the best and to work hard is, um, is, is massive, is massive. And probably that there, just work hard. And if you work hard, then, you know, you never know where you'll end up. Brilliant. Okay. So we've got about sort of five or 10 minutes max, and then we'll be, be wrapping up. Um, so if anyone's got any other questions, let's, uh, let's get them in. Um, I have one I'll, I'll finish with, but um, Noel Robinson, um, you've put a, a really, really good one on there. Um, so I'll let you ask yours, please. This is for Dino. Dino, so as we progress and the club gets, you know, the club's getting bigger and bigger with upwards of what over 250 kids in the academy now and uh, the teams get more teams in the National League and we're filling the gaps between the 07s and up to the 18s. It's other clubs, so-called bigger clubs are then starting to be attracted to our players and uh, it's easy for a kid and parents to think, Oh, the likes of Limfield or somebody that's looking looking the kid, but it's not always the best environment for them, you know. So certainly, at La, I know at like all we offer an environment that the kid can flourish. But how important is that, and how important is it that the parents and the kids really assess and don't get their heads turned by by those bigger clubs? Yeah, it's it's something that we have looked at within the club. That first of all, when 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 I first took over, it was something that I looked at and then more so in detail with, with Davey that we found that we had a really good group of players up you know, grassroots, grassroots level up till a certain age. And then once we got to that certain age, as you said, the so-called bigger clubs were coming and seemed to be cherry picking. <clears throat> We've obviously tried to address that over the years and it's something that we will continue to work towards. But for me, it's, it's making sure that we have the coaches. To me, coaches or managers are the most important thing at the football club. You know, if you're a young player and you've got a good coach or a good manager, it's it's very, 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 very difficult to, to leave that coaching and environment. When you, as you say, you know that you're that you're improving, you're getting better, and and also it's a, it's a facility thing. You know, years ago that when we had the old gravel pitch, you know, it, it maybe wasn't the most appealing place to come down as a kid and train on. You know, and or to go to to certain places like Dungan and to train and was maybe the most appealing thing but for, for me now it's it's as I said I've said many times that we've got everything under one roof we are probably the most outside of Linfield the most or the best club that, that has facilities we've got a grass pitch that is fantastic we have a 3G pitch we have a, a physio that's on site <laughs> we have a, a gym we have a, an ice bath facility that's that's going to be available very soon you know so everything that we have is tailor made to be in as professional as possible Yeah. Uh, and again, we, we've seen over a, a slight turnover this, this past 18 months more so. There have seen people that want to come and join like all, where we, we don't have to go looking. And I don't mean at, at first team level, I mean at, at 18 level and 20 level and, and, and youth team level. We've got now people who want to come to like all and they come to like all for all the right reasons because it's they're an environment that is very, very professional and they have, in my age, very good coaches who will, who will progress them right up through the age groups. And again, if if the talents are and the, and the and the attitude and the work rate, they will make the way to the first team. And again, it's about me. It's making sure that we have that pathway available. <coughs> As I said many times, that we, we we're never going to be a club that's going to be on a financial level playing field with, with other clubs around us. So we've got to look at different ways of, of bringing bringing players in and and the youth format that we have at Lockall is is a massive part. And will be a massive part in a massive future of making sure Lockall first team is successful on the pitch. If, if I just add uh, Noel to that, I'm sure you'll agree. I think through a lot of hard work from a lot of people at the club this last three or four years, you know, from even likes of yourself and the role you have, you know, National League team, the likes of Noel Willis, right through to you know, to Ernie, um, Denver, you know, the whole the whole sort of setup of people have worked hard at, at keeping our better players, um, and I think been able to offer them a pathway into the 18s that maybe perhaps didn't quite exist the way it is now uh, in the past, as well as the facilities. And then a first team manager that is, you know, tangibly giving young players a chance. I think that all comes together that we have such a strong, strong, strong case to make that the parents and players that the grass isn't always greener. And, and you know, 
the very few players, well, there's very, very few players that have left us over the last couple of years. Again, you know, some of them have come back and, and certainly a lot of other ones would admit that it wasn't all of what it was going to be. So I think the future of the club has to be very much, as you say, Noel, been able to keep keep those players, letting them see that we can provide the environment that they can progress into the first team and fulfil their dreams in football, be that first team Irish League, be that premiership, be that across the water. You, you, you know, you can fulfil that at Lockall Football Club and that's a message you want to keep getting out. I mean, if you, just from your point of view, because I know you're obviously very experienced as a first team player at Lockall and heavily involved in the youth, I mean, what's, what, what's your, your sort of answer to your own question? Yeah, I agree with everything I, I think boys have said. I think it's it's uh, continuing to show that we can, you know, we have that pathway there. I think the probably the difficulty for the club at the minute is that we have a gap between the 07 team and the and the eighteens, which is maybe you're not seeing the number of players getting that opportunity um, that's worked their way up through the ranks, you know. So we'll see that closing in the next couple of years. Um, but I think it's it's great. Like even we things like Dean even touched on some of the things earlier with the first team, the interaction with the other teams around the club. You know, I've seen first team players coming down and interacting with the younger teams, and even just with a couple of wee passes between them. And the, wee, the, the boys think that you know it, it's great. You know because I can't believe, as Dean said, you used to think that you seen a first team player at the club and you used to nearly be afraid to open your mouth or afraid to look at them because you thought they were somebody. Uh, better than you or something you know but everybody's the same and it just brings that family feel to the club and I think that's the, the big thing every kid some kids could go on to bigger clubs and they could flourish but I think the the thing is that other clubs are more commercialised whereas at Lockall there's that family atmosphere giving the kids a, a chance identifying that they've got this potential and you know bringing that potential along where it's you know, physically, there's a gap, especially between sort of 12, 14, where physically kids are a lot different and develop at different rates. So it's, you know, we can, we're, like, we're bringing the kids along, we're helping them develop, but we also are giving them the time where you don't get that at other clubs. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Okay. Well, listen, we're going to let you wrap up here in, in a few minutes. So there's going to be two more questions. If any of the youth coaches, you know, have any sort of quick points they want to make, uh, feel free um, if you want sort of 30 seconds to, 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 to input, we would be um, glad of your, of your input if possible. Um, so we'll just fire something up on the chat and let, let us know you want to make a quick contribution. Um, who was that earlier? DJ, just before we ask, uh, yep. DJ, just before we ask the 18s and 20s, the questions, I want to sort of flip it for the younger ones, just the thing. Is Luke Cartwright and Johnny Yurt still in here? Or? Yeah, I am, anyway. But Johnny, quick question, all right? And I spoke to DJ earlier about it. See that difference, and Dean spoke about it, how he has no problem taking a 20s player or an 18s player from our training and bringing them into the first team. So in terms of going over that line, and, and that's what it is, basically it, it, it's literally just a line. You know, we're there together as, as, as one club. Um, how does the tempo and mentality change for you going into the first team environment? Uh, well, I think obviously there's always going to be that. There's a massive step up in quality. Like once you get to twenties and first team, I think uh, you don't really realise sometimes how big a difference it is. Yeah. But uh, and there is that hesitation going over the first time you're thinking like it, it, it. First time you're pulled over and first couple of times it is a big thing. But the more you just have to be confident in yourself and comfortable in your own ability that that you've been called over there for a reason and that they haven't just been picked out of a hat they've looked at you and that they believe that you're good enough for it so you just have to have that confidence in yourself to push yourself on and the more comfortable you are once you move over there the better you perform so just be confident once you go over and comfortable and you'll you'll push on with your ability brilliant yeah Luke how about you I, I think the biggest difference for me was the like the small things matter more to first team players than nearly what it was in 20 so like small sided games and sometimes in the 20s or 18s it might, uh, it's, it's just a game it's just about like uh, it's just training here for an hour and a half while you go to first team and it's like 
it's like life or death. Like you have to win that game, and it's something I I actually I thought at the start like you know, this is this is mad. I I don't think I'm good enough. But the more you do it, and the more you sort of adapt that mentality and that attitude to think this matters. And uh, now you sort of going home to training. And you're thinking, you're kind of sleeping, you're thinking, goodness, I lost the game tonight. Like a small-sided match that really probably doesn't, in the grand scheme of things, probably doesn't mean that much. But it it, it, it means a lot. And that's, for me, the biggest difference is just the mentality switch is huge. But I, I really enjoy it. And do you find that, does that come on to you from the players that you're playing with? That minimum mentality within the first team, they've, it you know, off. is much greater? Yeah, playing with... Fergie and Scott McCullough and boys like that that sort of have that attitude, I think, and you notice it off those boys every week, and then you, I don't know, just it, rub, it rubs off on you. I think it's, I'm sure Johnny would say the same, and John would say the same, I think, as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. Brilliant. Okay, um, you said something there, um, Luke, actually, which um, was a question here from Matthew. So if... Uh, I'm not sure exactly which Matthew. It's just Matthew's iPhone, but it links into what what Gary's just been asking there, actually, uh, in, in in some ways in terms of of Adelaide's and performances. So Matthew, if you're there, please ask your question, and then we'll we'll move to yeah. wrap up. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. uh, Matthew. Yeah. I did. Uh, so Fergie, I was just going to ask. Um, uh, did you ever take time to reflect on your performance after games, and if so, did you find it effective to like reflect? Yeah, all through probably my career, I've always reflected after games. Um, thought about what I've could have done better or what I should have done. Um, um, you know, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, wouldn't dwell on it too long. You know, obviously you're going out there to be the best player that you can be and the best player on the pitch. But you know, sometimes you make mistakes. Sometimes things happen in football that's out of your control. Um. But yeah, I do. I would reflect on it now and, and think maybe I should have made that pass or maybe it, if I had made that run, this would have happened. But I wouldn't dwell on it too long because, you know, football's a funny game and it's not too long the next game, the next training session, to put it right. Yeah. Good advice. Right. Okay. Th- thanks very much. So we're going to wrap up just in a couple of minutes. Um, I've noticed that the uh, chairman of the football club, uh, Mr. Sam Nicholson, is on. I'm going to ask him just to, and after I ask the next question, and Dean answers it, uh, then Sam will get you to unmute yourself and, and through your camera and uh, get you to make any comments as, as chairman uh, on, on this and really do appreciate you, you being here tonight. Um, Dean, really just the last question, I suppose, to, to wrap up. Um, tonight's sort of topic, into the first team and beyond. Uh, we've dealt with a lot of really good questions and answers and thanks everyone for participating. And uh, But I suppose bringing it right down to sort of the one key question that I suppose so many of the development players, 20s, 18s, right down through the National League teams that are on the call and even for their parents. So w- what is it that, that impresses you? So if you're, you're down a 20s game, maybe an 18s game, we've got a VO at the club now where where you know I send you some yeah. footage of, of different things. So w- what is it, if you, if you walk at a game and a player sees you, what is it that, that you're looking at and what can they do to impress you? It probably comes back to what we said somewhere. Uh, for me personally, again, there has to be a certain amount of talent there. The talent, yes, can only take you so far. For me, it's your attitude, your your work rate, your ability to uh, listen to your coach or your manager, take take instructions on board. Uh, I think it's a, it's a real mixture of everything. Uh, again, for me, the, the most the biggest thing is attitude. And that's uh, that's my biggest thing is attitude. If you have the right attitude, and you're you're willing to work and learn and listen, you know you, you get where you want to be. And that's that's the bottom line. I think attitude plays a massive part, not just in football, but in life in general and and in sport in general. If you have the right attitude and you have the right mentality and you're prepared to, to do the things as, as Stephen has said earlier, do the things that maybe your mates aren't doing or or the, the player next to you isn't doing, that if you're prepared to go the, above and beyond, you know, at some stage you, you will get to where you want to be. And that's, and I hope he doesn't mind me saying because I know he's on, the, he's on the chat. Johnny Eard has a, has a fantastic mentality, a fantastic attitude. And over the last 
12 to 6 months, his improvement has been has been very, very noticeable. And that's down to, yes, the coach and that I'm playing with better players, but also his his attitude and his work rate and his, and his, his willingness to, to learn and listen. And he's getting the rewards and will get the rewards coming, coming forward. Yeah, I think he, Johnny, and, and not only Johnny, but Johnny, Luke and, and John, the ones, and Ben, they let have all come through you know, the youth system, I think, are a great example to any young youth player at the, at the club at the minute. Mm. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Okay. Gary, have you any last minute comments then before we um, go to the chairman? No, no, DJ, it's good. Brilliant. Happy enough. Thank brilliant. You. Okay. Um, if Mr. Chairman is there, if he can unmute himself and reveal his camera so we can all see him. Um, uh, <clears throat> there he can is. you see me, yeah? Yes, Sam. Yes, thanks for being right, here tonight. Okay, to look, David, DJ, um, thank yourself and Gary for arranging this. I think this has been a very well worth exercise tonight, and, and I have to say, congratulate you guys for for arranging this. I, I, I've really enjoyed, you know, obviously listening to the, all the different questions um, to Fergie and Dean, and uh, I suppose what, what what I will say one thing, you know, from from a football club perspective, we believe that we have. All we can do as, as, as a committee is put the pieces together and, and, and we're getting the piece together. We think we're the best young manager in the championship, if not if not the Irish League at the minute. And uh, we, we obviously aim to keep Dean because obviously our ultimate goal is to um, <clears throat> get to the premiership. Um, I do feel for Fergie because, like, you know, he has been such a, a servant to the club. And unfortunately, because of COVID, um, you know, um, he his his this is his testimonial year, and and the way things are going at the minute, it it's 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 going to be very very difficult in relation to that. So he's going to, have to play for another season. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no way. Look after those knees, Fergie. Uh, <laughs> but hey, no look. You know, we're <clears throat> as a committee. You know, we're, we're we're totally behind the. We have a, we have a project. You know, we we believe in a one. A one club mentality, and and it's been said tonight, talking about this kind of you know pathway from the youth to the first team. And I have to say, it's great when you see you know Dean putting a team out with it with it, with experience of Fergie and other players who play alongside you know the likes of the John Scotts, the Ben Neils, you know the look the looks and all of this world. And 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 like all I'd say to those young guys, like look at Fergie, like he is your typical professional. He's done it at. At the highest level, he's now playing lock goal. He's, he's, he's. I don't know how he keeps going. You know what I mean? The man must have a, 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 a great engine, and like you know, the, the amount of a, you know, the the area he covers in a pitch on, on a Saturday, and, and I suppose things like this are great because you know I did mention the one club sort of mentality, and and I know Dean and Fergie would 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 support me in this, like. We'd love, you know, it's already been said about, you know, the youth, they have 250 young people and their parents. We would love their parents to come along and we get playing football again and support the first team and, and, and bond that connection, you know, with, with, the, with the one club mentality from the youth through the under 18s and 20s to the first team. Because I have to say, you know, um, since I've been involved, and like I, I'm like, honest to goodness, like I'm, I've, I've fallen into this place, this position as chairman and, um, um after a, a couple of years of being on the committee, I, I got involved the time the club was trying to get the 3G and I helped them sort of obviously uh, get the 3G. And obviously from that, I have sort of looked at it and we've got a five-year plan and we're trying to improve facilities all the time in the club. And as Dean has said and Fergie has said, you know, when people come to the club, we want them to say, you know, these boys are professional. They, You know, we I want my kids to go to this club and I want to stay here and I want to play for the first time. So look, um, once again, thanks to Fergie and Dean, obviously taking part in this. And I know that talking to Dean and and, and the other players that, uh, as well as Fergie, you know, they they enjoy they talking to the youth and getting involved and, and and kicking the ball about with them. And and obviously a uh, that again cements that 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 relationship. But again, Davy, just thanks for you for doing this. Um, I will try and come in every if it's every Friday night and and listen because I say it is. It's very, very important. And uh, as I say, big round of applause to you and the guys for, for arranging this because it's a difficult time for us all. And I know my life is basically a 
go to work, go home, go to work, go home, go to work, go home. And you don't see anybody. And, and we're all living a life through, you know, Zoom or whatever. But hopefully there's better times ahead. And, and again, we can, we can get back out onto the football pitch. Um, and uh, as I say, um, hopefully everybody stays safe and well. And, and uh, as I say, we'll hope for better times ahead. All right, David, thank you. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Sam. I appreciate that. Um, so, uh, yeah, as I said, it was very much um, Gary's idea initially to, to um, put this on. Um, so you should be seeing my, my uh, screen there now, guys. You my, my uh, screen there. Uh, so ne next week is same time, 7 p.m. Um, is everyone yeah. seeing my, you see my screen, Dean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 perfect. Okay, um, so next week, guys, um, we obviously got off to a fantastic start. We're able to get Dean and, and, and Fergie here tonight, it's been brilliant. And um, next week, what we have is um, again, two well, two, two sort of very, very, very two well sort of known, very, very, very well known uh, footballers and, and, and people within Irish League football and indeed across the water in Pat's um, case. So, 7 p.m. next week, the topic is mentality and mental health mentality and mental health and Alfie Stewart obviously someone I know quite well been involved with alcohol for a couple of years helping out probably of all the people I know in football and I know a fair few um, Alfie's mentality is just a, a different level to, to almost anyone I know different level to, to almost anyone I know quite incredible so he's going to have some brilliant things to say and Pat does a lot of work with, with mental health and that's so important at the minute um, given the circumstance we, we find ourselves in so let you into a wee secret uh, as long as no one tells Alfie this, I'm trying to dig out the footage of Alfie Stewart scoring an own goal uh, against Glenavon at Morneview Park in a really important game where, where he headed the ball back to Mickey Keenan, but he headed it over Mickey Keenan into the net. So I'm going to ask him the mentality of a player that scores an own goal in an important game. How, how do you recover from that? So you can look forward to that one next week uh, when, when we get it up. Um, so that's not, that's all for tonight. Can I um, definitely thank um, Dean and uh, Fergie for taking their time tonight. Really appreciate that, guys. We can everyone give them a, a virtual hand clap if they can on the, on the thing. Uh, if you want to, um, let me come off share and screen. Yeah, if you want to put yourself on gallery, guys, just for a minute, you can see who else is on the uh, is is on the call, and then we'll we'll knock it in the head just about 20, 30 seconds. But over fifty people on the call. So feel free to go to gallery and, and flick, flick through the, the different screens. Yeah, and listen, thanks to you guys for turning up. Um, it wouldn't be much fun with sort of Gary, Dean, Fergie and me talking to ourselves for an hour. Um, I, can think of, I can think of better things to do, to be honest. Um, but having you guys on here absolutely makes it. So thanks to the parents. Thanks to all the young players. And uh, if you find it valuable, just do me a favour as we finish. Just fire, fire a wee message in the chat for us if, if, you, if you felt, or even just tell us what you like best about tonight. Just give us a wee bit of feedback. I'll leave it open for 30 seconds or so. So do us a favour and fire something in the chat um, if, if you got value or if you enjoyed that for us. Just, can, I, can I just say a wee quick thank you? Because I want to thank uh, yourself and, and Gary for the invite again. It's it's vitally important, especially as, you, as Sam was saying at these times, that that we do interact with other people and, and we do things like this to keep to keep everybody you know uh, involved in the football club in some way you know even it's not the best way possible but it's the only way we can do it at the minute so personally I'd just like to say a thank you from from yourself Davey and, and Gary to, first of all to get the invite to it and it's been a fantastic evening and uh, I'll definitely be on next week again Brilliant okay that's, that's no problem at all thank you Brilliant. Okay. All right, guys, listen, we'll, we'll knock out in the head there. Again, thanks, everyone. Have a really good one. See you next week. And of course, above all, stay safe. All the best. Bye, everyone. You know, brilliant. Appreciate it, lads. Thank you. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.